<laughs> Quarterfinals at the National Club. So excited, Lindsay. You are one of the most amazing people I've ever met. With that being said, I'm gonna give you everything that you can handle. Um, <laughs> employers should move to the four-day work week. As far as the definitions go, we think employers are very simple. It's gonna be the idea of companies, small and large, should be a question of a good idea. Move uh, going to be transitioning to the four-day work week. Essentially, in the United States, there's a large standard that you essentially need five days to work and essentially make uh, ends meet. What we're gonna be advocating for is that there should be a change and we should normalize employers uh, actually moving to a four day work week. Essentially saying that either A, it would be four tens, or it would be four eights in certain situations. With that being said, we're gonna be using a weighing mechanism of net benefits. Essentially, what are we seeing the most net benefits with? Are we seeing it from the four day work week? Or are we seeing it from the five work week? Or if my opponent has a counter audit advocacy, that also would apply. With that being said, let's get down to the first contention, which is the fact that it benefits employees. It benefits employees. Our first subpoint is going to be the five day work week. According to Harvard Business Review of February 2021, 89% of respondents uh, reported a worsening of work life, a well being got worse, and experienced burnout more often and more extreme. And that's going to be a major theme of what we're seeing in the status quo. A major theme of the affirmative case is the fact that in our society, we are actually dealing with so much burnout, which takes us to our second sub part point. Burnout. We see that according to the American Psychology, uh, Psychology Association, January 22, it says that burnout and stress are at an all-time high, 79% being related to work. That's extremely important in today's round. 60 saying that the impact of this impacts interest, innovation, energy, effort, uh, less co uh, cognitive uh, awareness. And that takes us to our third subpoint, which essentially is going to be alleviating the issue. Alleviating the issue. According to PBS, February 21, 21, 2023, it essentially found that in the UK, a trial of a four-day work week found that 61% or 61 companies that participated from June to December decided that they will keep the uh, four-day work week. They saw revenue grew 71% less burnout, 79% less stress, 48% more percent more satisfied, and 71% increase in satisfaction in what these individuals doing. Again, that's going to be extremely important because it was these factors that drew up the revenue for these companies. With that being said, let's get down to our second contention, which is going to be the impact to employees. The impact to employees. Uh, oh, actually, I'm sorry. And the impact of employers. The impact to the employers. Uh, according to Gitnux, which is a con uh, consulting firm essentially dealing with productivity and management of March 2023, Eric said that according to 70% of the U.S. workers that were polled, 40 our work weeks are in fact outdated, make many feel as though the work is, they, they're done to be work done in less time. Companies that adopted a four day work week have seen anywhere from 20 to 40% increase in productivity. Nearly half, a lar uh, half of large business leaders agree that making the switch to a four day work week will be important for the uh, future of businesses. Again, going on even further, we see that it creates better results. The New Zealand study, uh, study about uh, a thousand people from the US, Australia, Ireland, UK, New Zealand, Canada, and they found, they found resounding success in every dimension. Both the employee and performance and productivity enjoyed while working there. They saw an increase of about 37.55%. Again, these individuals are seeing more productivity and more resources with them. Our third and probably most important contention today's round is going to be the impact to our society. Impact to our society. Our first subpoint is education. We see that Society of Human Resource Management talks about how 60 school districts across Texas are switching to a four-day work week, aiming to reduce burnout for teachers, help recruiting, and improve student attention. Why is that extremely important? We're seeing the status quo. Teachers are not taken or taken for granted. And so again, giving them that four-day work week allows for there to be a transition to that. Going on to the second subpoint, which is going to be the idea of police. We saw that according to the Department of Justice, when police officers were working a four-day work week, there were less crime rates. The main reason was essentially is assuming that this was going on to the police officers' general overexhaustion, aggression coming from those situations. Third is simply going to be the medical, uh, essentially, situation, the medical field. We see that the clinical advisor talked about how 52% of individuals, currently healthcare workers, are dealing with burnout. Again, transition to the four-day work week is being extremely beneficial for retention to reduce uh, burnout. And so when we're looking at today's round, I know that the major impact of the affirmative is burnout, but we see that in our society, it's very impactful. 
and in fact is impacting us at every single dimension. That's why employers should move to the four day working. Thank you. As always, questions of clarification for you. Starting off, just to make sure, the affirmative didn't have a specific plan for advocacy today, right? No. Okay, and because of that, when we're talking, what, what is burden? All right, let's talk about burden. The burden resolution on the board or the burden resolution no. that they written Burden. What is the word burden? Oh, burnout? Uh, I would say essentially working so often, so hard, that essentially you just you lose the value in that job. You right. don't think it's worth it. So it has to do with the amount of work I'm being asked to do and the frequency at which I'm having to do it. Yes. So does the affirmative plan, of, or does the affirmative idea of moving to four days guarantee less hours or less responsibilities? Um, so again, this would kind of be different for these situations because there are models that are ten. Right. Uh, ten so off. so uh, I would say, and this is just an analytical argument, if you're adding two hours, so let's say example, if you do a four ten, we currently have five eights. If you do a four ten and you're adding two days right. to but, those, that would definitely create less burnout because you have more days off, more days to recuperate okay, in these so situations. Okay, so let's talk about the study that you talk about specifically, um, which is really, I believe, the only model multi-corporation multi company, uh, multi-corporation study um, to uh, burn out here. How many industries were actually in that study? I, it was 61. 61 companies. Yes. How many industries? Uh, it didn't look at all of them. Okay. Um, do you know what the qualifications were to see those benefits? No. Okay. Cool. Thank you very much, Jerry. bittersweet round with him, so good luck to both of us, whoever wins this, coming for you next. Um, that said, we're going to have a really fun conversation today. Again, the topic is employers should move to the four-day work week. First thing I'm going to do on the side of the negation is just go over some of the resolutional analysis, make some clarifications, and then we'll move into the cases today. First, he talks about employers. He defined this as companies. I think we're looking at it functionally correctly, though. We're looking at schools and medical systems as well, not just corporate CEO type positions, but anyone who can employ somebody else counts as an employer under the resolution today. Should he define as a good idea? Remember, judges, we can really reason anything into sounding good. In order to know if it's actually a good idea, we need to know if it's an advantageous action or actually yields benefits, not just hypothetically. He says move to the four-day work week. The resolution inherits a specific type of four-day work week, right? I made this clarification even just telling me the resolution. The four-day work week is specific. My opponent and I simply can't even agree on what that looks like. Is it adding more hours to the days or not? Is it reducing the workload or not? It is because of this that we're not going to be able to absorb a lot of the benefits he tells us in the round. I pointed this out in cross-examination, right? What actually causes burnout? It's the amount of work I'm being asked to do. It's the frequency at which I'm being asked to do it. We don't know in an affirmative world whether my workload is changing, whether the hours at which I have to be in the office are changing. He's nodding his head right now, like he agrees with that. Ultimately, <laughs> it's a danger. We point that out for each other. Um, anyway, so next, looking at his case, uh, his first contention here were the benefits. The first point of analysis, again, being this idea that it is going to be highly dependent. His subpoint A here, he talks about the harness of a five-day five day work week, specifically that some folks are feeling burnout. I would largely like to argue as well, this has to do with the American culture when it comes to work. We are a work-heavy, work-dominant society. Not not everywhere in the world has these same types of benefits or same types of harms. Ultimately, even if we move to a four-day work week, corporations are going to be incentivized to have folks complete the same amount of work, and we'll talk about that in the negative case. Secondly, he talks about burnout. Again, just because burnout is a problem doesn't mean that a four-day work week is the solution. He has to show you the linkage here, and he simply does not. Next, he talks about alleviating the issue, and specifically here, he talks about the UK trial. Now, this is the only study that we have at the end status quo that looked at multiple different industries, multiple different corporations, rather than just a single case study, so it's super important. And notably, according to the Scientific American, what the study is looking at is only five industries, online retailers, financial services, animation studios, and one specific fish and chip store. So actually four industries, my apologies, um, and one specific fish and chip store. So it's very, very limited and in a culture not representative of our own. Further than that, what they found is that it required individuals to receive the same pay as they would have beforehand, regardless of whether their hours changed. Some of these corporations did, in fact, limit to four days without changing hours, without increasing how much you have to be there. Others said, nope, still got to do 40 hours. Either way, if the pay was not the same, the benefits were not absorbed. The affirmative plan, or the affirmative rationale, rather, 
doesn't actually guarantee us access to these benefits and rather overgeneralizes the results of that study. Secondly, here he talks about the impact to employers. Now remember today, um, this, is, this is interesting to talk about. He talks about how the 40 hour work weeks were outdated, but he doesn't actually show you how we're changing the hours. Remember, he and his self has reiterated twice to us it might be four 10 hour shifts. You're still working 40 hours, and therefore that benefit he tells you isn't happening, isn't occurring. Third, he talks about the impact of society. We're going to classify this more deeply with my case here in a moment, um, but essentially he talks about some benefits to some school districts from Texas because they've chosen to do it. I asked what happened to the actual education there, right? A lot of corporations can measure their success with productivity bottom lines. In a school, that's the actual value of their education. What is happening to the students who now have less educational structure? What's happening to the length of the school year? Let's look at the negative case. My first contention is employer, uh, employer vantage point. Employer vantage point. It's important today that when we're looking at the resolution, we're recognizing the employer is the actor here. When we're looking at the decision that they're going to make, it needs to benefit them above all. And ultimately what we know according to Breed HR, as well as the manual, is that we know that the employers are more likely and incentivized to keep, employer, uh, keep employees at their offices for longer, making them complete the same amount of work in less days. Secondly here, we know from Boston University, there are key issues here because it takes, uh, they have to take this time to rebalance how to get this productivity done, causing stress for the employers, often meaning they have to hire more employees, hiring uh, increasing the hiring cost in the short term. Next here, looking at my second contention, it's going to be dependent benefits. Dependent benefits. Subpoint A here comes to us starting from Forbes and the CEO of marketing at a tech company who says, if I mandate flexibility at our company that you get Fridays off, that's not flexibility, that's mandating a day off. Ultimately, what we see with this is you are not, we don't know in the affirmative world because of the lack of a plan. If you get to pick your other day, is every restaurant shutting down on Fridays? If that happens, the practical implication is, well, I have Fridays off so I can go to the bank. Now the bank's closed on Fridays. Or they face the benefit harms from the first contingent, having to again hire more employees. Secondly here, we have to ask how it impacts our holidays, our vacation pay. Are employers actually going to change what our benefit packages look like? The affirmative team didn't touch on this, but they ultimately need me to be at work for a certain amount of time to meet their bottom line. So what does this look like down? And then subpoint C here is going to be pay. This is something we've already touched on quite a bit as well. That Scientific American analysis shows that it's only true with the same pay. So now either employees or employers are having to fish out the same amount of money for less work and hire another employee or the benefits of burnout are not getting solved because I'm still there still doing the work. My final contention is industry specific. We touched on this a little bit already. Education industry is still suffering. School days, we have to readjust school in this country. Also the medical industry. Yes, doctors, we need to address this culture of burnout, but not having doctors in the hospital isn't the way. Finally, it's going to be the supply chain. I have analysis here from CNN Health and NPR that talks about how our supply chain has gotten backed up when companies have in the mechanical industry have tried to move to a 40 work week. We already have supply chain issues. We can't risk it. Thank you. In the cross ex and even in your own speech, you suggest that the most likely result would be a four hour, I mean, four day, 10 hour week. Can you agree to that? Uh, I said that that's one of the highways that they're incentivized to do so, yeah. Okay. So let's just talk that. about on a biological level or basic level. You said that the way in which we can decrease, uh, uh, what was it, burnout is through uh, reducing the frequency and the hours that you're working, correct? Uh, that's what we agreed on in the last cross examination at the point where they're still working 40 hours, they're still working 40 hours. Okay. Totally fair. So uh, you kind of like sped through a few things at the end there. You talked, you kind of talked about my case, but then you brought up your own case. Uh, so what, uh, what were, like, what was your? Can you just lay out your taglines? Yeah. So my first contention was employer vantage point. Okay. Second contention was dependent benefits with three subpoints. Subpoint okay. A being flexibility. Sub subpoint B being impact holidays. Subpoint C, pay. Okay. And then third contention, industry specific. The three that I talked about. Yeah. So pay. that was the criticism of my evidence, correct? In part, we discussed your evidence throughout the case. So that's what condition three is about education, medicine, and you, supply chain. You really locked down uh, this broad claim on my evidence.
questions where you say that this study only looked at uh, four industries. Are yes. you aware that I look, I had about three different pieces of evidence all showing that there was an increase in productivity from the mm -hmm. workers and in fact the company? So again, the, so first, first of all, this specific analysis is the only one that looks at multiple corporations at a time. So you may have individual case studies where it works on a case-by-case -case basis, but the analysis from the negative is it doesn't work for everybody. The affirmative okay. has to make so, this push so all, what, and it may work sometimes, it not, not across the board. What is not working? Teachers, it doesn't work for medicine, it doesn't work for the supply chain, are the three examples that I okay. present, but awesome. again, the affirmative has a burden of proof to show in more cases, not just in isolated cases. Gotcha. affirmative negative team degree, we are looking at whether or not this action is going to be most advantageous or more beneficial for society or even the idea, the idea of the United States. That's what we looked at. We cannot just simply be looking at one avenue, right? I know my opponent's going to come up here and show you one job in which they need five days. What I'm saying is that when you're looking at the broad society in the United States, there's an issue in the status quo and we need to change it. You notice that one of the biggest arguments we hear from the negative team is that it's American society working so much. Our response is that we need to create changes to American society to be able to adjust. Now, my opponent essentially says, I don't give you any specifics. I don't give you a plan. I don't need to give you a plan. But I believe what we agreed upon was the four hour or the four day, 10 hour uh, work shifts. My argument and basic analysis is that if you get one more day off to recharge, that is what benefits you in your life. So yes, I understand. You are gonna be working two more hours on each of those shifts. But again, I would take the last two hours of a shift versus working an entirely new day. So when we're talking about it, she agrees in her own speech that how do we reduce burnout overall by reducing the amount of hours and frequency that we are working. You are quite literally getting an extra day off, meaning that you are not gonna be as work at work less frequent. That's extremely important in today's round. Let's go over some of the actual case analysis. The first contention we talked about was the fact that there's a problem in the status quo. We talked about from the American Psychology Association that essentially burnout is at an all time high. Going to my evidence, she really only picks out, cherry picks one piece of evidence and then criticizes it. Yet when we look at the consulting firm uh, that specifically deals with productivity and management, we look at the PBS study, we look at the study that looked at the US, Australia, Ireland, UK, New Zealand, and Canada, right? All different models, but all seeing the exact same amount of success in productivity, not only with the employees, but with the employers. The employer's making much more money. She essentially comes over here and says that, hey, the employers need to understand, like the employees need to be paid the same. Well, again, four hours, I mean, four days, 10 hours. That's how we're solving that problem. Going on to the idea of third contention, the idea of society. Uh, cross applying my argumentation on education, right? We're seeing record label, uh, record levels of burnout, right? People, these works, uh, these works, people working uh, so much. Whenever you look at education, they're not being able to retain them. When you look at the idea of doctors and uh, healthcare workers, we are not being able to retain them. Why? Because the work in life is so exhausting. And so that's why individuals are trying to make that transition. When we're looking at the idea of the police, right, we talk about how it decreases criminal rates. Why? Because we see police officers not being as stressed, not being as aggressive. And so when we look at her off-case contention points, mine respond very well. Employers, right, she talks about how they need to be flexible. My response is quite frankly, they're seeing so much productivity. She says they have to hire more employers. That's not a bad problem, they have to hire more employees. So second is the idea of dependency. My argument, we already responded to most of these. The industry cross apply our argumentation. It's going to outweigh in almost every facet. Thank you so much. always a fun round with Mr. McCauley. Uh, that said, we are going to jump back into our resolution today, and I want to be really clear about what we're talking about here. We are not just saying that it could be a good idea, but rather or not this ought to be embraced or has advantageous action. If at the end of today's round, Mr. McCauley has left you with doubt about whether or not this problem is actually getting solved through a four-day week, that flows to a negative balance. And at the end of the day, we need to recognize that Mr. McCauley cannot adopt a plan in his second affirmative speech. 
He, in cross-examination, acknowledged, no, he's not picking anything specific or any specific way to achieve these benefits. So even though we can acknowledge what the most likely way that employers would act is, this is not his right to say that that's how they actually would act in all of these industries, right? He can't adopt a plan later on. More than that, though, let's actually go through the argumentation in today's round, starting with the negative case. First, I talked about employer vantage point. What I'm really getting at in this argument is the idea that it has to be incentivized to the employer, right? The employer has to see these benefits. We look at that weighing mechanism to get them that benefits because they are our actor. Ultimately, an employer now still needs the same amount of work done. Right, so either you're staying there longer as an employee to get that done, which we know is gonna make you less productive because of all the burnout reasons he's telling us about, or you don't, and you, you don't get that work done, we have to hire another employee. He kind of brushed over this saying, well, it's not a big deal. Again, if we're maintaining the same amount of pay, this is now an exuberantly higher cost to the employer. That analysis didn't get addressed by my opponent. And remember, that Scientific American study, why it's so significant is because it is the only study the only one, um, the only one that actually looks at multiple industries. This is that UK study with 61 countries, right? Or 61 companies. It's the only one that exists. And when we understand that, we have to see its impact being astronomical. Again, if you don't have the same pay, those benefits that he talks about aren't there. Maintaining the same pay hurts the company. Moving further here, the second convention here was about dependent benefits. Remind ourselves that it's the affirmative's burden of proof in IPDA debate. He can't just show us one or two companies or one or two isolated incidences in which a four-day work week to any capacity might be good. Because it could be for some people. I'm not here saying it's the worst thing ever. But across the board, it is not the answer. Today, we've agreed that the problem is burnout. But he has not shown us how a four-day work week is the answer or even what the four-day work week is. Third, I talked about industry specific. Let's break this down for a moment here. So point A was the idea of education. This cross applies with this case pretty well. The analysis that I gave and the questions that I asked is what actually happens to the students, right? We didn't get any information. In a corporation, we know that we can measure your bottom line by our, how's your productivity, what's your sales like. In an educational system, it's your student outcome. It's how much you're learning. We don't know what the impact of this four-day work week was on that bottom line. He did not address this. But secondly, we talked about the medical industry. Again, the analysis I gave here is what's happening when doctors are only there four days? How are we maintaining that same pay? How are we bringing in the healthcare professionals that we need, especially when we know, again, hospitals are largely understaffed because of COVID. Third here, we have the supply chain issue. And I know I touched on this quickly, but it really is very important. At the end of the day, what we know is our supply chain was disrupted when various manufacturing companies began to implement this four-day work week. They faced this Backlog. That's that NPR analysis from the end of my last speech. Looking at his case for just a moment here, he talks about the benefits, right? The benefits. And here again, we talk about the idea of burnout. And he says over and over that 40 hours is too much. So even if we agree and allow him to adopt that plan, right, he is not solving the problem that he identifies. When he tells us 40 hours is the problem over and over and over, and then he gets up and moves to that plan and say, okay, 40 hours in four days, that's it. That doesn't solve the problem that he identifies. Secondly, here he talks about the impact to employers, and here he really just said how uh, you know something about New Zealand and how 40-hour work weeks were outdated. But again, we're not moving from a 40-hour work week within the affirmative world. Third, here he talks about the impact to society. Again, education cross apply this with my case. We don't know what the actual um, education system impact is. He talks about police. This may be one isolated incident where it works great, doesn't outweigh. Third, healthcare burnout. This is again cross applied with the affirmative case. What I'm going to do at the end of the speech is offer you voters or reasons why I want you to sign your ballot to the negative. And the first is gonna be a big one and it's just the burden, the burden. The affirmative team has a job to show you this uh, the resolution is true, prove it is true without me getting up here. Like, we need to be able to believe it. And ultimately we still don't know what a four day work week looks like. We adopted a plan midway through and we don't see solvency, which is why my second voter is that of solvency. Right? When we identify a problem, we should try to address that problem. If the problem is burnout from the expectations at our workplace, from the norms around us, from the hours that we're there, then let's change those things. Yes, we should end this culture of burnout, but a four day work week where I'm being told to do more instead of a nine to five and nine to seven, that doesn't change burnout. That doesn't change our work culture. Not to mention not address the other harms we talked about in my case. Thank you guys very much.
because I had three minutes to answer a six minute speech. For me to be able to respond to every single argument is nearly impossible. So what I did was focus on the most important arguments to determine why you should be going for the affirmative or the negative team. Let's talk about what she essentially said to Bergman, right? She says that the affirmative has to show you confidence and the advantages that I've tried to prove. And unfortunately, what we see is a lot of the negative team trying to cast doubt on what my evidence and what my argumentation truly was. Let's remember that in cross-examination, we clarified what exactly we advocated for. We said in the status quo, we are doing a five to eight. We are doing five shifts of eight hours. We're saying we need to go to four to 10. And a piece of analysis that was completely dropped by the negative team was the idea of having that extra day off and how beneficial that is. That is what's alleviating a lot of the stress. That's what's allowing people to be more productive. She says that my evidence causes what talks about 40 hour uh, work weeks. But you know, again, the clarification is that all of these criticisms are of five day work weeks. She talks about how her piece of evidence is the only one that looks at other industries. In all reality, that's a huge claim because my evidence, the only one that she uh, has a problem with was the one that specifically was in the UK. But let's remember when I quoted Gitnux and it was a consulting firm for productivity and management and it said that there was a 20 to 40% increase in productivity. She says that there needs to be some legitimate claims of solvency. Well, Judge, we're seeing a beginning to end a benefit. Then when we look at the New Zealand study, which I tell you that again, we study people in the US, Australia, Ireland, UK, New Zealand, Canada, all different models, yet all saw success. success. Those companies' revenues grew from 37, grew 37.55% more. That's extremely important in today's round because she's asking you for solvency. She's asking you for concrete advantages. And what are we doing? We're giving them to her. And so with that being said, let's get on to a few voters. First one, let's talk about the first one she talks about, the, the idea of solvency. I think that I hit that the nail on the head. I know I don't talk about every single industry, but I don't think she does either. Moreover, when she makes these claims about education and healthcare, what are the results? Does she give you the results? No, she doesn't. Whereas I tell you that in the status quo, more schools are moving to it. Why? Because teacher burnout is so high. We're showing you that teacher bur uh, education burnout, right? Uh, or I'm sorry, medical burnout, right? Again, they, uh, the piece of evidence that I showed you, in which I told you that many individuals are healthcare uh, providers you know, or healthcare workers are trying to leave. The idea of the police brutality, when we talk about individuals, essentially police officers not being forced to work as much, meaning there's less aggression that usually goes on in these situations. So when we're looking at reasons to vote, let's go to the first one, cultural burnout. She agrees that we have this major issue in the status quo. How do we solve it? Well, it calls for a major shift. The second voter is what a four day work week looks like. Again, judges, I would choose to work two more hours on every one of my shifts if that means that I was working less frequently and I had more time to myself. There's more productivity to the employers and in fact, the employees. Thank you so much.